Hi everybody, welcome back to my floss tube. My name is Rachel and this is Lemonade Stitching. Happy May, happy spring. I cannot believe it's May. This year has absolutely flown by. Today is Thursday, May 2nd, and this is floss tube number 17. Um, yeah, I haven't seen you guys or talked to you guys since February, which is mind boggling. Uh, it's like every time I think I'm gonna get on a schedule, I don't, but I've sort of just come to accept that. Um, that I'm just gonna do this, you know, when I want and when I can, and live life other than that. I've really, really been enjoying life in Lexington this spring and just doing a ton. Um, so I thought I'd just kind of fill you guys in on what's been going on since I last talked to you. Uh, if you don't know or if you're new here, I live in Lexington, Kentucky. So this weekend we are getting ready for Derby, the Kentucky Derby. I am wearing my vintage Kentucky Derby shirt that I thrifted last summer. Um, I thought it was fitting for the video, uh, but I'm also in grad school here. So since my last floss tube update, I have finished my first grad school class, which was uh, digital game based learning all about how like video games and game based learning can help people learn better. Um, and then I also just finished my second class, Instructional Design 2. Uh, this week I have turned in my final project. Um, so that's one semester of grad school under my belt. I also work full time for the University of Kentucky and at a restaurant on the weekends. So I've been doing that. Um, with my weekends off, we've been hosting family and friends. Um, and then in my tiny little bit of free time, I started reading again. I've been reading Kingdom of Ash from the Throne of Glass series, and then I've also been reading Make It Stick, which is actually a learning, um, like, nonfiction psych kind of book um, that was recommended to me by one of the assistant deans that I work with uh, at the university, and really loving it so far. I've never read a book like that, like a nonfiction book, and loved it, um, so I think it just kind of affirms that I've kind of found my interest in a career path that's really good for me. Uh, so yeah, I checked it out of the library, which is really cool because I've never checked a book out of a school library probably since like fifth grade. Um, I took the campus bus and I found where the education library was and checked it out with my ID. When I was an undergrad, our library was under construction for the last like year and a half and then it was closed for COVID before that. So it was a cool opportunity to finally be able to utilize the library because I love the libraries. Um, but what else? We've just been trying to explore Lexington, get to know it, um, enjoy the nice weather. We've been going to play tennis, going for walks around our neighborhood, uh, my fiance and I, and talking about wedding plans for next year, and just doing all that fun stuff and really just trying to live life to the fullest, you know, being adults. Um, but yeah, we celebrated one year in this apartment. Uh, technically, we haven't been here for a full year, like physically, but we've had our lease for over a year, so I'm counting it. Um, and I think that's, I think that's the majority of what we've been doing, what I've been up to. Um, I have gotten some stitching in since I last updated you guys, but it's kind of ebbed and flowed in, you know, how productive I've been just with life. Um, but yeah, the last thing I want to talk about before I get into showing the project I've been working on is StitchCon. Um, I'm very excited. StitchCon's coming up in just over a month. I'm going to be at Weekend A, so I was like, I need to get a video out. I know people are starting to kind of go through floss tubers that are going to be there and kind of see who's going to be there. And so I wanted to have, you know, an updated video. I didn't want my last video to be from February, and then I show up, and I'm like, look at me. <laughs> um, but I'm super, super excited for StitchCon. I'm super excited to meet people. Um, from all over, talk about cross stitch, talk about other things, find some common interests. Um, I got a StitchCon sweatshirt. I would be wearing it if it was 95 degrees, so we'll save that for my post StitchCon video. Um, but yeah, I'm just really, really looking forward to it. A nice weekend away from work um, will be really, really nice, especially after the next month. We're gearing up for our busiest season at my job. So it'll be a nice little break between the prep and the actual busy events. So yeah, speaking of StitchCon, I do think I've picked out one of my main goals um, that I wanna work on that weekend. I was just thinking about it as I was kind of prepping to sit down and film this. And that is a finishing goal, which still is kind of lofty, but I feel like between now and StitchCon, I'll get a quite a bit of stitching done on this, um, but not too much to where it's like, I'm doing the last stitch at StitchCon, but 
Um, I think I want to finish Birdhouse Garden, which is a sunset kit. Um, I'll put up a picture of it, like the completed project. I think I want to finish that at StitchCon. I think I want to make that my main goal. Um, this is a piece that my grandmother started and passed down to me. And I started working on it last year, put it away for a bit, especially like during the winter and stuff. Uh, but I really want to finish this piece while my grandmother's still alive. And so it's better to just get that done now and show her um, next time I see her and just be like, look at this piece we made together. So I'm going to make that my priority project. And um, this is my progress on it since you last saw it. It's still in the hoop because I'm currently working on it. So I'm not moving the hoop. But this is where we're at. Um, I actually recharted this like electronically I didn't change anything I just turned the chart into an electronic pattern using max stitch because the old pattern was so um, hard to read and I was worried it was gonna fall apart and get ruined um, but that has made it significantly easier to make progress on here um, it's split into nine pages and so the first six pages are completely done and then I'm working on page number seven right now for this bottom row this is the very bottom of the project as you can see, the margins on this are pretty much non-existent, so that's cool. Uh, but we're making it work. Um, I definitely am going to have this professionally framed. Once it's done, I'm going to put both of my grandmother's and my initials in it. And it's going to hang in my house forever because I love grandma. She taught me how to cross stitch. So I think it's only right that this piece deserves professional framing um, and to be displayed because I'm really proud of it. It was long, a long lost piece, actually, fun fact. Um, I think I shared this last summer when I moved to Kentucky, but I thought that piece was lost. Um, when I went through my stash, I like had found the kit floss and the pattern, but I didn't know where the piece was. And I could have sworn I had seen it before because um, I had like randomly gone through all my stash like in the periods where I wasn't stitching just to like look at it and organize it. But I had pretty much just accepted that I didn't know where that piece was and that it was lost. Uh, and then last summer when I was getting ready to move, uh, my dad was like, oh, by the way, like, there's some needlepoint stuff, he called it, um, over in this, you know, corner of the basement. And sure enough, this piece was all nicely rolled up in a little cardboard tube that my dad had put away and labeled it needlepoint. And I was like, oh my gosh, I like freaked out. I was screaming and crying and throwing up, <laughs> you know, um, not really, but I was super, super excited. So long, long story short. I want to finish this at StitchCon, if not by the end of the summer. So, everything else I've been stitching on is kind of just thrown in this basket. Because, fun fact, I stitched this... Er, oh my god. I filmed this video two weeks ago, um, but I was in a rush because my camera battery was dying. And it was like 4 o'clock on a dark Tuesday, and I absolutely hated it. And so, I didn't end up posting it, obviously. And uh, I just never cleaned out the box of goodies so there might be some cuts in this as I kind of sort through all the projects that I have to show you guys. So this piece I'm actually thinking about stitching on some more this week and next uh, because Marjorie Maid's Pick a Whipped prompt for May is uh, a project from a magazine and I have not been keep keeping up with Pick a Whip like whatsoever but every once in a while I'll kind of you know join in just for fun. Um, it'll help me kind of like make a decision on what project I want to stitch. But, of course I don't have the cover photo. I don't know where it went, so I'll put it up. But this is Autumn's Glow, and it's from Just Keep Stitching Magazine. No, I said that in the last time I recorded this video. It's from Just Cross Stitch Magazine. Love you, Pam and Steph, but you don't have a magazine. <laughs> it's from Just Cross Stitch, the October issue. Um, I saw this pattern on Instagram and immediately bought the PDF of the magazine so that I could stitch it. Um, the piece is called Autumn's Glow, and I'm just stitching it on some 28 count Charles Craft uh, tea dyed linen. That's the color, it's not actually like hand tea dyed. But this is where we are. This is a ton of progress, if I remember correctly, from when I last showed this to people. Um, I'm obsessed. This is the bottom of the piece, so I started in the middle. This is the like half of the height. Um, I've done a, all the back stitching pretty much on the pumpkin, a good chunk on the lantern and leaves, um, and I just left any long stitches that were more than like three stitches um, so that they don't get too ruined, but I was working on this for probably two weeks, maybe a week, I don't know. But I didn't want to put it away, but I was also kind of like mentally drained from 
all the little color changes because this is this is a hefty project. This I actually have to keep the threads in a box because there's so many. So I was like, I just need to backstitch something. I need something to look nice. And so this is what that was. I'm obsessed. This is also probably coming to StitchCon as like my second piece to work on because I want this hanging in my house as soon as possible um, because I'm obsessed with fall. Fall is one of my favorite seasons, um, or at least it always has been, but I'm thinking I might have to change that to be, um, like if someone asked me what my favorite season is, it's fall in New England slash the Northeast or spring in Kentucky because this first spring in Kentucky is going really, really well and I really, really like it. So anyway, what else do I have in here? There's nothing in this bag. I don't think I actually put any projects away in bags last time I filmed this, which is awesome. Love that for me. No, I didn't. None, literally none of these bags have projects in them. So that is great. Okay, we've made it to the bottom of the box. I had all the empty project bags on top, so that's going to be fun to sort through. Um, but I'm going to show you guys a new star because that's just what's on, on top of the bottom of the box. And this is actually going to be a gift for my mother-in-law. So Sheila, if you're watching this, no, you're not. Look away. Jump ahead. I don't think she watches these, but just in case. Um, but this project is from Amalyn Designs Santa's to Please and ABC's leaflet. And I'm working on Santa's alphabet. So you can see some examples up here. There's like a welcome sign and a little Noel sign. And it's basically just a full alphabet um, with Santa's like in and around the letters. And so I am making this piece with my fiance's last name. Hess and uh, giving it to her as a Christmas gift and then depending on how it comes out might make some tweaks and eventually make one for our home as well. Um, this stitched up super super quickly. I was very surprised at how quick this project came out. Um, the H is completely done. He's back stitched and everything and then I was working on the E and I there's also several color changes within this Santa. There's like a surprising number of color changes and so I wasn't really mentally prepared to do all those color changes, so I just kept the brown going um, and saw how far to like kind of help count out and stuff like that. So that's where we are with Hess, a new star, and I probably worked on this for like four or five days straight and then put it away. Um, I'm stitching it on 32 count. <clears throat> what color is this? Taupe Lugana which is the same thing I'm stitching Autumn in the City on, if you've seen any of my other floss tube videos. This was just like a scrap piece that I got when I bought the fabric for that. It was like an odd little corner. Um, I got it at Keepsakes, and so Barbara, I don't know how much she charged for this little tiny scrap, but she might have just thrown it in, honestly, because it wasn't very big. So, thank you, Barbara, for, you know, enabling this project. Uh, love Keepsakes. When I started this and kitted up, I think I talked about this a couple months ago now, I guess. Um, but I was in there with all of the floss laid out trying to pick the perfect like brown color for the letters because it's called for like an off-white um, and I just did not vibe with that so I ended up picking a nice like cho milk chocolate brown and so far it's coming out really really well. Next project I have to show you is Valentine's Day Quaker by Primrose Cottage. I, f I might have started this when I last made a video but I also might have started it like two days after the video, I don't remember. Um, this was a third project that I added on for hashtag Pink February Stitching. So some people may have seen it over on Instagram, um, but I don't think I've posted a picture since I finished it. Um, so I will show that to you now. Here is the finished piece. It is hard to see on camera because I did it monochrome. This is actually hand dyed linen by me. Um, I used ice dyeing with some hot pink dye. And then as the ice was melting like into a tray, I had thrown just like a whole skein of white DMC in and it was very, very slightly variegated. And so that is the same pink I used to stitch and it is significantly easier to see it in person. I just don't think the camera can pick up on it very well, um, or at least not from what I can see. But fun fact with the stitching of this project, I do have another like half of this fabric left. So something else will come out of this fabric, but um, like I said, I started with that pink on pink, uh, DMC that I had and I was going through it, going through it. And I bought this on a whim. I think it was 
Stephanie, who was talking about it from Just Keep Stitching, if I remember correctly, you know, from February, um, I bought it immediately and was like, that's so fun. I have the perfect, you know, fabric and floss to use for it because I was looking for a project for this. Um, but I didn't read anything on the back, you know, where it talks about the size, where it talks about how much thread you need. And so I had gotten probably like two hours of stitching in. I had stitched a couple of motifs and I looked at the back of the pattern and I realized it called for three skeins of Classic Color Works. And I don't work with Classic Color Works enough to like know how much floss that is. Um, so I was devastated because I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to have enough floss to finish the whole thing. So I ended up kind of jumping around and doing all of the big motifs first. And then um, I was going to go ahead and fill in like this one this one this one and then fill in all the little stitches just with like similar colors of pink or white or something i was gonna figure out once i got there but what i ended up doing is as i was seeing how much floss i had and how long that was taking i actually ended up um making the pattern smaller so i took five columns off of the end and five rows off of the bottom to make it 75 by 75 stitches instead of 80 by 80 and I had just enough thread to do the whole thing with a skein of DMC. Um, I have no idea what count this is. I want to say it was 32 count before I dyed it. Um, I stitched it two over two and I had one strand left to use. Um, so like, don't quote me on that. Really wouldn't recommend risking it unless you're comfortable with that risk not paying off. But for me, it did pay off. I did have just enough thread to finish this. I'm very, very excited. And I have a plan for this, but I'm not ready to share that plan just yet. Um, but I will eventually. <laughs> I will soonish, but just not yet. So that was a finish since you guys last, since I last posted. Uh, next project is March by Crochet Agogo from her Window in Time series. This is from part one of the series and marches down here with the little frog, super cute. I start this, I think like in January or February, like I gave myself plenty of time to work on this. Um, and this is all I got done. <laughs> I think when I last showed this project, I had like the outline of the house and I didn't even finish the house. I still have to do the door and the rest of the roof. Uh, but I just, I haven't been feeling called to work on these as much recently. Um, or like all year pretty much so I haven't and that's okay you don't have to work on anything you don't want to so March crochet I'll go go and this is on 32 count beautiful beige which is the same as all the other crochet I'll go go pieces I have stitched I like forgot for a second what else I had stitched on this um, I also got that at keepsakes but like a year and a half ago I think I don't know Next, I think we have two more pro Yeah, two more projects, I think. We have Jacques View, which I definitely had started last time I filmed, I think. Um, this is a full coverage piece that I thrifted. It's like a little leaflet. Um, I think it's from like 1976 or something, so I don't know if you can still get it, but it's super cute. It reminds me of my kitty, and I love traveling, and I spent like a month in Europe right after um, undergrad, so I had to get this when I saw it. And rather than kidding up all 70 colors in this piece, because I know it'll be a while before it's done, I stitched up just the green and the grays for the doors, and this is where we're at. I'm just stitching this um, on 28 count Easy Grid Ada, no, sorry, 14 count Easy Grid Ada with two strands of floss, all DMC colors and yeah that's the current situation um, I think we're getting close to the bottom but I don't know exactly how much farther I guess I could look at the pattern that would probably make... no I'm just kidding the pattern's not in here well I mean the pattern is here but not the one I'm working off of so I think there's probably like 30 ish rows if I had to guess um, to the bottom so very exciting Jacques view I don't have any plans for this one I love it but I don't like have a timeline or a goal in mind for when I want to get this done or like where it'll be displayed or anything like that finally we have my oldest project in the bin which is summer symphony of Usilla County cross stitch kit this one I have shown several times um, but 
has only made progress relatively recently. Um, definitely my last video, I had a lot of progress. Uh, but I have made a little more progress since then. I think I pulled this out just a handful of times since my last floss tube in February. I think I pulled it out a couple days at the beginning of March and that's about it. Um, but basically I had a ton of parked threads and throughout February and March, I finished parking all of the threads. I finished the first like half of the piece. It's not exactly half because like this side is wider than this side, but this side is completely done. So I'll give you a little pan. And then I moved over to the side, parked all the random little threads, and then just started doing whatever I wanted, <laughs> carrying colors over. Um, there is significantly less popcorn in this area because I'm getting into the roof and the sky and stuff. Um, this area down here was just absolutely exhausting. The pathway, not so much, because this is really just like two main colors. But all these flowers and stuff were just absolutely exhausting, so... I'm very happy to be away from those for a bit. There's definitely still more flowers and there's like a whole tree over here and stuff. Um, but there's also like a whole house that is like two colors. So it's nice to have a little break. And this is just 14 count white Ada with Kit Floss. Uh, Kit Floss is getting old, like literally old. <laughs> this was another hand-me-down. Um, so I don't even know how old like the actual kit is, but it's working out well. Obviously, it's very old, old enough to have like painter's tape on the edges. I really should probably, honestly, I might take this two stitch con and have it surged at the shop. That's a good idea. Someone remind me to do that because I'm going to forget. Uh, but those are all the projects that I have. And I did want to just share a couple pieces of fabric that I got. Uh, Megan from Georgia Girl Stitching has a D stash. It, D stash Instagram, which I love. I've gotten stuff from her a couple of times, um, including, I don't know, sometime in March. I don't even remember now, but she had posted that she was going to be doing a little D stash. And I was on Instagram that day at the end of work, just refreshing, 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 waiting because I do want to build up my stash, but I'm also not like comfortable with committing to a club and paying, you know, $35 every month. But then I don't like to go out of the box and buy fabric that I don't know what I'm gonna use it for. Um, but then like I want to have fun things that I can just pull from. So it's very like, depending on the day, you'll catch me in either mood and you know, whatever. But for now, no clubs for me, but D stash pages, absolutely yes. So <laughs> I got three pieces of fabric from her. I was a little nervous because obviously it's hard to tell fabric colors from photos, but they all came out so, so, so gorgeous. Um, first is a, just a little piece of 36 count linen um, in the color cobalt from Fiber on a Whim and it looks like this was part of like an advent box um, but it's like I don't know what kind of blue this is but it's like a light-ish blue but not like a super light blue with a very slight modeling um, she's super super cute love her then I got a color and cotton dried violets fat quarter. This was a September 22 fabric of the month club and it's Belfast 32 count. And this is like a purpley pink, absolutely stunning, so obsessed. I took a risk on this and it paid off. It really, I wasn't sure like what to expect with this color, but it definitely, definitely, definitely paid off. So I'm very glad I picked this up. The last piece was just a 32 count light mocha Belfast linen. Um, I think this is almost a fat quarter, but there is just... I thought one of these was missing a cut of it. Now I'm confused. For some reason I thought one of these had a chunk missing, but maybe I'm thinking of like a piece of my own stash. Anyway. Whatever size this is, I think this is a fat quarter. This looks like the same I just held up. Um, a 32 count Belfast uh, light mocha, which is funny because this is pretty much the exact color I wanted for Autumn's Glow. Um, just like a very light um, tan, like warm toned, neutral tan, light brown, whatever. Um, but I was too impatient to wait and like find something I liked. I wanted to start it right away. 
so I went to the store and got you know just something from Michaels but honestly like looking at them next to each other they're not that different so good to know um the one from Michaels is the one on top and it's a little darker in person I don't know if the camera is picking up on that but you know if you're looking or are curious about colors or similar pieces the one at Michaels is very similar to just light mocha so that's everything I think that's everything I have to show you guys um I hope I didn't go too fast sometimes I watch my videos back and it's like why am I talking so fast why am I rushing um I don't know I don't know but yeah I've been trying to be active a little bit um you know watching other people's floss tubes and stuff in the last two months <laughs> since I've made a floss tube um recently I've been watching Pam and Steph of course I love watching them Monday mornings at work don't tell my boss just kidding just kidding it's fine um so I watch them at work uh Megan the Seattle Stitcher Marjorie from Marjorie Made and then I recently started watching the Hathaway Stitchers, love them. I think I've only watched one or two of their videos so far, but I have another one in my watch later. I just, when it starts getting busy at work, you know, you don't have the brain power to multitask as much. So hopefully soon I'll get to watch that video that they just put out. And then I've also been watching Katie from Red's Stitchery, I think is her username. Uh, I really like her videos. She formats them a little differently where she like switches the camera angle around and shows you close up with her projects. And so her projects are gorgeous. Um, some of which I really want and some of them are just fun to see other people stitch. Um, she has a couple kits that I might have to scour the internet for um, at some point, not sure when, but yeah, I really liked watching her video recently and Megan uh, talked about her in her most recent floss tube and I was like, oh my gosh, love her. Um, Katie showed up in my like YouTube recommended recently. So I jumped on and she's only made a couple videos so far. So go go check all those people out. Um, I did list all those off the top of my head. So hopefully I didn't mispronounce anything or leave anybody out. I apologize if I did. Uh, sometimes, you know, you just get carried away while you're doing these and who knows what comes out of your mouth. Um, this is my gallery wall. I realized uh, you guys have never seen this. I also finished this in the last two months since my last floss tube video. Um, we've been working on decorating our apartment now that we've been here for almost a year. And so I did this freehanded with a ton of thrifted frames, prints from Etsy, and then also some photos of Graham and I. Um, like this little gold one is a picture I think this one's a picture and then this is actually a print from our vacation to LA that we took at the end of February um, I guess that was a thing that we did in last month as well as we went on a trip with my college friends there were 12 of us big Airbnb long weekend away and so it was awesome to get to catch up with them meet a couple of significant others that I'd never met and have all my friends get to meet Graham because a few of them still hadn't met him just because we're all spread all over the place so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed catching up I hope you liked seeing my projects and the progress I've made I don't know if I'll have another video before StitchCon hopefully I will because school is done and my next my next class doesn't start till mid-June um, but we'll see if not before StitchCon definitely after right now I'm planning to do some sort of vlog situation of StitchCon but like We'll see how that works out. Um, but yeah, I hope you all are doing great and enjoying spring. And I will talk to you next time I make a floss tube.